let me um, <clears throat> bore in just a little bit on, on uh, the problem that we, I think, try to address in this issue of the magazine, in our rankings, in our uh, continuing coverage of higher education. So every year we, we, do, these, uh, we do this college guide, and, and we do it because we think that uh, uh, assessing institutions of higher education, that these are absolutely key to the country's future. They are the place where um, research and knowledge gets created that drives the economy. It's the place where young people uh, learn the uh, habits and um, uh, of democracy and the uh, capacity to be uh, uh, of, of self-government. And it's uh, where uh, I can't think of anywhere else in American society that is more key to upward mobility. It's the place where uh, people of modest means can get a, 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 that first foothold on the middle class. Um, so uh, we think there's far too little attention in the American media on the higher education sector. So, so we devote an entire issue to it every year and have been doing so since about 2005. Um, it should come as no surprise then that, that, that the higher education system, like the country itself, is in some trouble right now. Um, you've seen uh, uh, tuition increases far outstripping in inflation this year, uh, as it has been for many years now in, in higher education. One hears about the cost increases in health care. Well, the same thing's happening in higher education, pricing uh, more and more students out of out of, a, out of a chance for middle class life. Um, we had tuition hikes averaging nearly 8% in public universities in the last uh, academic year. Um, you've had uh, community colleges unable to keep up with the demand in this tight labor market, uh, closing off classes, uh, turning students away at exactly the moment <coughs> where students need uh, to be retrained or to get the training and the credentials that they need in a tough labor market. Um, uh, we have for-profit schools that many people thought were going to be the solution to providing low-cost, uh, high-quality education to people of modest means. And, and more and more, it's turned out that they're better at, at uh, foisting unpayable debts uh, on their students and, and creating profits for themselves than giving their students credentials that actually work in the marketplace. Um, and then at elite schools. Um, despite much talk from many elite universities that they're going to open more their their uh, their ranks to middle and lower middle class folks, there's been almost zero movement on that front in nearly a decade. Um, so higher education at the upper levels has become, uh, as much as it's ever been, a, a, a bastion of privilege rather than a, a an escalator of upward mobility. So. Uh, these are the sorts of issues that we've tried to look at, and, uh, and it is, can be kind of depressing when you think about the lack of progress uh, in, in a lot of this, but you know, America has a knack for reinventing itself. And uh, I think that there are a couple of reasons that we can be optimistic uh, in the face of, of the performance that's not what we'd like. And, and the first is the increased recognition of the problem and of the need for reform that I think that you're beginning to see um, among scholars of higher education, uh, philanthropic organizations with Lumina, you know, by far in the lead on that, um, and at the highest levels of, of the federal government, frankly. We now have a, uh, an administration, uh, the Obama administration, that has set a very high goal of, uh, of uh, America regaining its uh, a dominant position that it once had um, in college graduation. Um, it's a, a, by 2020, a very bold goal. Um, and you've seen the administration do a couple, made two or three major, major reforms in its first two years um, that suggest that they're, they're, they're serious about higher education reform. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, and then the second reason I think that we can have some uh, sense of optimism is that if you look, and we try to do that in this issue of the magazine, deep into the uh, workings of higher education, of the higher education sector, um, you'll find innovations uh, that promise real solutions to the problems that, that we've identified.